Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Saint Norbert, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, children, we have come to the end of our school year, the last of our Masses together, until, God willing, in September. And we have come as well to the end of the feast day of the Sacred Heart, on this beautiful devotional day, first Friday, because, of course, as we have a perpetual novena, that means a novena that lasts all the time, every Friday of the year to the Sacred Heart, so too, especially at this church, we never really stop celebrating the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And we remember again today that one of the great reasons for this feast day is to make up for the wickedness, the sin, and even the sacrilege of many Christians not only in a sort of a general way against Jesus or Mary or the Catholic Church, but specifically the sins and the sacrileges against the uh, blessed sacrament, Jesus and the holy sacrament of the altar. Today's saint illustrates that truth beautifully in his life, and he also illustrates another truth, and it is this, children. Now, you've studied many things this year, and some of them you will doubtless very quickly proceed to forget, uh, much to your teacher's distress when you return in September. Your teacher will say to you, well, what did you, what did you do this summer? Have you forgotten everything we learned last year? And there is a certain amount of forgetfulness, isn't there? But there are other things which I hope that you will never forget and always remember, especially as we get older and the time of our formal schooling comes to an end. We have two young men who are graduating. This will be their last uh, time now at a Catholic school, probably for the rest of their lives. Why, there are other things that we must never forget, and there's a great help which Almighty God gives us. What is that? That is to say, Scripture tells us already, Solomon does in the Old Testament, there is nothing new under the sun. Once we understand that principle, children, we can see how certain themes in history, certain ideas, certain truths, and unfortunately certain sins, faults, or weaknesses always are being repeated over and over again. <clears throat> now, we're not much for ecology, of course, because that's a form of the worship of the earth and it's a trendy replacement for religion. It's a religion in and of itself and the recycling preceded the ecology binge. But the truth of the matter is that the great themes of history are always recycled. And once you understand some of the basic truths, which is why you must pay attention to the, your Bible history, your catechism, your church history, the lives of the saints, and regular history, which we study at our school, under the aspect or in the light of Catholic truth and not the world's lies. Well, once you understand all of these things, then you are equipped to go out for life and say, oh, well, that's what that is. Well, that's happened before. I understand, and I know what my, what my reaction to that should be. For example, in the life of our saint, he was a contemporary of so many other saints. He lived in 12th century Europe. His good friend was St. Bernard of Clairvaux. And he was uh, a young man from a very noble family, and he um, uh, led a pretty good life as a young man. But once he got away from school, I'm afraid that he fell away <coughs> from his high ideals. He had himself ordained a subdeacon, and he got himself a church job for which he just collected the money, the salary. He was an official canon of a, of a church, and spent all of his time with a cousin of his who was the emperor, the German emperor. He led a very worldly life, rather dissipated, I'm afraid. One day he had the same experience that St. Paul had. That is to say, he was knocked from his horse by a storm, and he heard a voice. 
when he was lying in the ditch. And the voice was, uh, stop doing evil, start doing good, seek after peace and pursue it. Now what's interesting is that almost the same thing happened to Martin Luther, who was the great anti-blessed sacrament, anti-sacred heart, heretic and sinner. But uh, he didn't listen. He broke his bonds, whereas St. Norbert listened. And because of his experience, he became a very devout uh, priest and preacher. He was all the time being denounced by worldly or sinful priests who didn't want to hear anything from him, and they accused him of being a hypocrite. But the Pope gave him his blessing, and eventually he founded an order of priests who would chant the divine office called canons, and these canons would also preach and take care of parishes and lead a very penitential life. That's something which goes on throughout each of the pages of history. There have been saints and orders like that to reform the church during her hour of need. Um, eventually he became the Archbishop of Magdeburg in Germany, and there he had to fight against those who were stealing the church's property. Very often money you'll see as you're studying and getting older, money and finances is a very important part in the proper understanding of history. He fought against that, and then again against worldly or unworthy priests who were neglecting of the church's worship and that was soul needed. Now that happened especially in a uh, town in what is today Belgium called the part of Belgium called Flanders. The town was Antwerp. There was, it was a big city and there was just one priest who was the parish priest for the whole big city and he was a very unworthy man. And because of that, this has happened so much in history because this priest was not a good priest why the heretics came and they took advantage of it. And there was one man who was a very persuasive uh, preacher, as there are many persuasive heretics today, and his name was Teclan, and he was a layman, and he preached against the mass and the priesthood and the blessed sacrament. And he gave big banquets or parties for his followers, and he told them it was perfectly all right with our Lord if they broke all of the commandments just as many preachers are secretly or doing today, more or less, that's what it comes down to. And, uh, well, he got lots of followers. Hardly anybody was going to the Catholic Church. And what was worse, then his followers would steal the sacred host and try to outdo each other in the, hiding it in the most filthy and unworthy places imaginable. Well, this was the situation in the town of Antwerp when our saint came. And there was, there was, as it happened, a battle, and the, the heretic leader was killed in the battle. But his followers were still going on. So St. Norbert and his canons, the Premontre they're called, or Norbertine, gave a wonderful example of holiness and of prayer. And they had a special grace from God to be able to find wherever the Blessed Sacrament was being hidden and treated outrageously or sacrilegiously. And they would always be able to find the sacred host, and then they would have a procession and prayers of reparation. So the symbol of St. Norbert is a monstrance or a ciborium. He is a blessed sacrament saint against, for reparation, for sins against the blessed sacrament. And it was for that same reason, wasn't it, that our Lord appeared to St. Margaret Mary and asked us to keep the Feast of the Sacred Heart and our first Friday communions of reparation. Children, nothing's new under the sun. It's just the same old ideas and the same old heresies. Once you learn your good Catholic principles in this church and in this school, you will be prepared for wherever you go or for whatever happens. There are many things that you may forget over the summer or that you may forget as the years go on that you've learned earlier, but these great truths of our faith and of understanding the world, you must never forget. And because you remember these truths, you must remember as well the plea of the Sacred Heart. Remember me. Love me. Offer reparation to me. Can our Lord count on you for that? At least during the summer months, I hope that I'll see many of you at the communion rail for communions of reparation. Not because you have to, 
but because you want to, because you've remembered, and you don't want ever to forget. God bless you. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.